Great, Mike Bushell with the sport there. We've got another semi-final to look forward to tomorrow night, of course. Right, time to have a look at the newspapers now. We'll run through uh, some of the front pages before we talk about them in a little more detail. Uh, indeed, the photograph on the Times is, of course, tomorrow's semi-final. I mean, I say tomorrow, technically it's today as we've gone midnight. Uh, but the lead story, era of cheap food ends as prices surge, is a similar theme on a couple of the papers. We'll talk about this in a moment. You see the front of the Telegraph putting a figure on that. And the mail homes in on one specific, accusing uh, profiteering their petrol, the price going up five pence a litre in the last 48 hours. Let's move through a couple of the others. And the mirror is uh, the, the um, same story which the mail had, the photographs on the front page, the search for James Hughes after his mother's body was found. FT with Hillary Clinton, of course, under an hour an hour of voting to go in Pennsylvania. Critical vote. Uh, Royal Bank of Scotland's the lead story. Guardian. That's Billy Bragg. Uh, as England prepares for the biggest St. George's Day in recent history, singer Billy Bragg on how to celebrate without being embarrassed. And uh, the lead story is all about the 10 pence tax abolition, which we'll talk about shortly as well. Finally, the Independent on Zimbabwe comparing it to the genocide we've seen in Kenya and Rwanda. Right, with us tonight to have a closer look at these uh, papers is Mark Oaten, the Liberal Democrat MP for Winchester. Hello to you, Hi. Mark. Right, well, let's um, start off with the food prices, as that's on uh, several papers. It does. I mean, there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of days about the impact of mortgages, but here's another story about how day-to-day -day lives are being affected by increased costs. And very graphically, the Telegraph have... As you can see, uh, a story about pasta going up by 81%, milk 17%, rice going up, cheese, butter, eggs. I don't know what's in your weekly food shop, but according to Telegraph, for an average family, it's around £800 more a year. And that's a big increase. The confusing thing is there's a, a food shortage. And if you look around, we're paying our farmers an awful lot of money not to actually grow some of these crops. So there seems to be a mismatch at the moment. And, you know, surely the solution is to get our farmers growing perhaps a little bit more local produce. I mean, some of these figures are going to start to ram home, aren't they, with people? Because, I mean, the percentage increases. Uh, I mean, eggs, for example, up 47% here with, a, of course, with cash figures put to it. £2.58 now instead of £1.75 for 12 medium, free range, that is, mind. I mean, these aren't luxury items. These are the kinds of products that you need to have each week. We're not talking about luxury chocolates from Belgium. Uh, staple products here, and they're very, very big increases. Like butter, up 62%. It will yeah. affect a lot of people, and of course, particularly pensioners, because you know they are not seeing big increases in their pension, but they may be being hit by these products. And it's bad news also if you drive a car, and most of us do, and as well as facing those increases in food prices, the front of the mail has a story here about the big increases in, in fuel costs. It says that the average £50 a week fuel that you put into your car is now £8 more than it was a year ago. Now, if you fill up maybe four or five times a month, that adds up to quite a lot of money. It's maybe yeah. £50 a month, just an increase on fuel. If you've got two cars in your family, it's £100 a month. These are not small figures. And, and all of this plays into um, the next story we'll look at, which is in a few of the papers. I think we saw it on the front of The Guardian, didn't we? The 10 pence tax abolition, uh, close to your heart as a politician, of course. But it makes, it, it makes that story all the more potent, doesn't it? Because the poorer, poorer people have less money I mean, people, for these increases. Whether they've got a mortgage, whether they've got a car, food prices they're feeling the pinch and of course for some of the lower paid they really are feeling the pinch over this 10 pence tax fiasco now the interesting story that the Guardian have picked up here is that Frank Field the Labour MP who is leading the rebels appears to be saying to the government well look if you put a billion pounds in into this financial year to try and solve this problem then we'll lay off and when it comes to the critical vote next Monday night if this billion pound goes in it may just save the government from defeat on Monday night there's, uh uh, there's a lot of coverage of this throughout the papers. This is a uh, spread inside the Daily Mail, pages six and seven. And uh, indeed, this is Frank, it is Frank Field, who was on Hard Talk, in fact, just a, a short time ago uh, on our own channel there. Uh, I mean, there is no sign of the rebellion disappearing yet, is there? Although, clearly, there's an attempt for it to, to be 
dis for disappearing. There's a lot of talk, a lot of discussion going on when you're, as I was at Westminster this afternoon, you can see people in huddles discussing this. I can't believe for a minute that the government won't pull something out of the hat before Monday. They can't afford to be defeated on a budget measure. And Field appears in some of these papers to be finding a way forward. For example, he's discovered that there is actually 1.2 billion of unclaimed working tax credits from previous financial could years. It, could it really be a poll tax moment? If they get this wrong, it could be. But I don't think, as of yet, there's a mood amongst Labour MPs to really force an issue of almost no confidence on the budget. So I think they'll pull back, and I think the government will pull back. Bearing in mind also we've got local elections just 10 days away. They can't afford to get this wrong. Do you have an assessment on the number of Labour rebels? I mean, it was that list we saw inside the mail was 39. I moment. think we're talking anywhere between 40 and, and 60, but when push comes to shove, I suspect it will be a lot less, particularly as I think that Frank Field will broker some kind of compromise. And all the Lib Dems would vote with the rebels? All of them. Conservatives, Lib Dems, a, a, a rather peculiar <laughs> bunch of individuals will all suddenly find themselves taking up this cause, which of course okay. was something we should all have spotted two years ago. Well, you called your, yourselves peculiar there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Leave that with you. Um, let's just talk about the story which was on a couple of the front pages. The mirror here saying the lost boy. It's a, an awful search here for a um, young disabled lad. It is. I mean, obviously this story develops as, as, as the hours go on. Sadly, uh, the boy's mother was found earlier on today dead and now there's grave concern about her son particularly that uh, he's 22 but has a mental capacity of a, a much much younger child and it's obviously uh, not going to have a, a happy ending the way things are panning out at the moment hopefully something will come up but it's not looking promising at the moment okay now we were reporting earlier um you may have seen a report on um, Gone with the Wind and the musical being staged in London. Now, what we have is some of the reviews, and they make interesting reading, and here in the Telegraph, they make interesting headlines. Um, Frankly, my dear, it's a damn long night. The, the, the crits are in, <laughs> and I mean, it's a, it is a headline dream, isn't it? The, the, the amount of fun you can have with this. And Charles Spencer is not impressed. In fact, he said that uh, when he'd emerged from the theatre after three hours and 40 minutes, it felt as if he'd spent several years watching Gone with the Wind. He'd probably missed just the Beijing Olympics, <laughs> but also the London Olympics for 2012 as well. Oh dear. And it, the review doesn't get much better. Uh, it seems to be a similar pattern emerging. But I think that you know the refreshing thing here, frankly, is it's the first musical in London which the BBC haven't had some kind of programme <laughs> deciding who's going to play the lead characters. All right, you now, two could be Clark Gable. Now, 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 now. <laughs> we've, we've been criticised. Who was that? I've forgotten. Kevin Spacey, I think, was criticising yeah. the BBC, wasn't he? Uh, saying, anyway, never mind. Let's <laughs> all skip over that. Uh, OK, finally, um, Spitfire Hero. It's St. George's victory. Day, and, and you know, this is a, a, a classic British hero, and, and sadly, Wing Commander Paddy Barthrop has, has died. It's obituary in the Telegraph. Listen to this. He fought in the Battle of Britain. He escaped twice from prisoner of war camps. He then went on to become a test pilot and then a winning jockey in Hong Kong. Mm. They don't make them like Paddy Barthrop anymore. And I think it's rather nice on St. George's Day at the Telegraph celebrate that archetypal sort of British war hero. An incredible life, full of adventures um, and uh, you know, a wonderful tribute to him in the Telegraph. OK, right. Well, Mark, thank you very much for that. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you again. Thanks very much indeed. Mark Oton then. Right, let's get a weather forecast now. Here's Laura Tobin. Hello, Laura.